Hi, I'm Danielle, and this is Chatter Out Loud, a podcast where I share thoughts and TV commentary on shows I like to watch. Now, before I start, I want to ask that you go ahead, like, follow, share, and subscribe. And on YouTube, where I upload my companion episode of my podcast, be sure to hit the notification bell. This way you can get a notification every time I post a new episode and you won't miss out. It doesn't cost you anything to follow and subscribe. So go ahead, hit the bell and thank you in advance. So welcome, you guys, and thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Your presence is very much appreciated. Okay, so there was quite a bit happening on the live feeds yesterday. Uh, I'll share a few things leading into the fireworks we had last night, uh, to which they wound up shutting down the live feeds for the night. Um, But we'll get into that a little later. Uh, First, I wanted to share a few things related to gameplay and... um, comments that were made and confirmation of an alliance or two. Okay. So one of the first things I observed yesterday or not first, but one of the things I did observe yesterday in watching the live feeds was Marty and Gino, the Greek talking game. And then they switched switched to speaking French. (laughs) Uh, I picked up a few words here and there. I am nowhere near fluent in speaking French. Um, I took it in high school for three years. I traveled to Canada on a school trip in high school when I went to Montreal and Quebec, uh, and I practiced to string together a sentence that helped me a lot while I was um, visiting Canada. And that sentence was, je m'appelle Danielle, je ne parle pas français. (laughs) Uh, And immediately they started speaking English to me. And basically I'm telling them, my name's Danielle and I don't speak French. (laughs) Um... So anyway, but I I just like seeing that. Uh, They're talking game and all of a sudden they just start speaking French. So that was pretty cool. All right. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Summer. Um, She is really into spirituality. Uh, She likes looking at herself a lot. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, she's a pretty girl, but she does like looking at herself a lot in the mirror. Um, But another side shows how she believes in like reading signs and angel numbers and she has a sociology degree. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Smart girl. Um, and she's been very social in the game. And she's in three or what I now think is f- are four alliances. Um, she even talked game with Kevin. And they appear to vibe together. And, you know, Kevin is kind of like an isolated person in the house. He's not really in the middle of... He's not in the mix, right? Um, I love how she reminds people... Um, And she tells them to surrender to the big brother experience, right? And that's so she won't um, forget like, oh, wow, out of all these people that applied, I'm on the show. So I I like that positivity. Um, I did see where JC Lynn, and this was a lot, they talked about this a lot on BB Twitter. And, you know, for us fans, we know BB Twitter is very, um, it's real. (laughs) And they can be... They're on you um, or on the house guests when when they say silly things. Um, All right. So one of the things that uh, I saw trending on Twitter was when JC Lynn was trying to imply that Summer is quote unquote scary. I believe she was in a conversation with Gino and she asked him, what do you think of Summer? And then he's like, I don't think anything of her. I mean, he kind of like, what do you mean? And she indicated that she found Summer to be quote unquote scary. Now, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, when I first heard it, it's almost like a undertone there because Summer hasn't given anything. I mean, she speaks, she speaks up, she talks, but I don't know what scary means in, in terms of J.C. Lynn. And I don't know why that adjective was used to describe Summer, right? Um, I just, just a few seconds ago, I was telling you how she's into reading signs and angel numbers and how she's social. Um, she's a sweet girl. So I, I, I didn't like that necessarily. Um, but the implication is that there's an undertone there and it, it could be perceived as a microaggression, right? Why are you saying that Summer is scary? 
What did she do? What did she say? I didn't care for the comment. But anyway, while she was talking with Gino, Gino's like, no, I've had ex- ex-girlfriends like her. I didn't. I mean, he kind of blew it off like, no, I don't find her scary. So I'm glad that that happened. Um, but I'm telling you, I am looking at JC Lynn a little sideways <laughs> now. Yeah. All right. So Jay and Moose, um, they're talking and they are talking alliances, uh, guessing who is aligned with whom. And Moose is pretty good at throwing off the scent, right? Because he conveniently said that he sees Herman is in a lot of groups. <laughs> and I thought, is he throwing him under the bus? <laughs> I just, I mean, I know that may be part of his strategy to throw people off, but I just, I don't, he just threw her mom under the bus saying, yeah, I see him in a lot of, a lot of groups. Um, and by the way, I, I said to myself when I heard him say that in terms of her mom or in a lot of groups, I, I, I heard him, I'm thinking like, aren't you in two alliances with him, Moose? <laughs> um, <clears throat> All right, going back to J.C. Lynn, she implies to Dr. Josh that Marty would put up Stephanie if one of them pulled themselves off the block. And let me just uh, remind you of the scenario at this point in time. So Marty is the HOH, J.C. Lynn and Jay are on the block. And so when J.C. Lynn was speaking with Dr. Josh, she was um, implying that Marty may put up Stephanie if J.C. Lynn or Jay pulled themselves off the block. Um, and as the day went on, it looks more and more likely that he, at least Marty is considering this. So we have to see. Um, there's a sentiment in the house that Marty is playing hard during his HOH. <clears throat> he's telling people to their face they're going up. <laughs> he keeps, um, he's willingly sharing who he'll replace if one of them, one of the nominees come down. Marty has talked a lot uh, in the past day or so. And he's repeating himself a lot. He keeps telling the story where he was in the HOH playing the game and how he's turned into the camera. (laughs) He keeps saying, you know, I'm playing an honest game. I mean, to me, it just appears that he is one of those people. And we see this a lot every season, right? There's one or two people who just do not respond well when they're in a position of power in the house. And I think Marty is one of them. He is playing too hard right now. And I think he's a little paranoid. Um, For some reason, he he thought he was a target way before, and maybe so, maybe because he was the oldest person in the house. But in all of his stories today, he's justifying why he did this. And he keeps repeating the same stories. And he's just... I wonder this, I wonder that. And he's, he's just talking so much and he seems a little paranoid. And I'm thinking, Marty, you're the HOH, calm down. Um, go through, I don't even know how he picked these targets, to be honest. He's telling those stories in terms of, well, I made Stephanie a promise, and but she was looking at me. <laughs> she was looking at me during the HOH competition. And I don't know, I felt like she was after me. Like, why are you so paranoid? But we see this a lot. People get an HOH, um, they, they get HOH, they start to hear a lot of information from people, right? Because everyone wants to talk to the HOH. So they start consuming a lot of um, information and I think that gets to them and then they start making up like scenarios in their head. Then that becomes how they narrate all their stories and then they're believing things and it's like, what is going on? Um, but Marty, he seems to be cracking a little bit. Uh, I don't know. He's questioning things where it shouldn't be questioned. I, it's just, I don't know. He's playing, he's playing the game. Yes. But I think he's like freaking out. It's almost giving me that Frenchie vibe. If, if those of you who are fans and you watch BBUS and Big Brother 23, when Frenchie um, was HOH, I think he was, was he the first one? Well, yeah, I think he was the first HOH. But Frenchie, and he left the next week or the week after, if I'm not mistaken. But during Frenchie's HOH, he was so paranoid. And he there were 16 house guests. He was the HOH, two nominees. Or he had to make uh, put up two nominees. And anyway, long story short, he promised like everybody but two people in the house safety. <laughs> and then went back on that saying, you know, I'm going to nominate Brent, but oh, Brent's a nice guy because Brent talked to him during one of those HOH conversations. And now he 
promised rent safety and he promised every person. And uh, it just was a mess. Frenchie walked around that house going into different rooms and people were speaking. Then he's like, oh, I think they're talking about me. And he, w- he was just, it was so exhausting. And I'm getting that type of feeling with Marty here. I mean, not as exaggerated as Frenchie, of course, but Marty is just, I mean, he keeps repeating this story. I looked in the camera and I said that, you know, what, so what you looked in the camera? Are you trying to show us that you're you're honest or like what is I, I I don't get some of it but it's it is um it was a lot he was on the fees a lot and he talked a lot all day I guess that's the point I'm trying to make all right um <clears throat> and one other thing I, I find uh that cracks me up is Marty is so quick to tell Jess and Kevin how they are perceived in the game when clearly he doesn't even have a clue on how he's being perceived, right? He wants to tell them, like he has a little bit of <clears throat> clout right now because he's HOH and people are talking to him and he is in, a, in an alliance. But then he's telling Jess and Kevin, like, if one of them come down, I have to put you up because of this. And then he's telling, like, he's telling Kevin, you're not a threat. <laughs> people don't see you as a threat. And I'm like, oh, you have a whole... I guess, you know, one of the things I'm saying here is he has no read on the entire house. He thinks he has a read on everyone in the house, but he doesn't. And he's talking to Jess and Kevin like he knows every single thing that's going on in the house and he doesn't. And it's just so interesting just to watch him operate right now. It's a little exhausting, a little bit. All right. Okay. The Honey Bunch, they still have life. Yeah, it seems like the Honey Bunch um, has J.C. Lynn's back, it seems like, in terms of if she were to remain on the block or remain one of the two nominees, they would have her back in terms of keeping her. And I remember that J.C. Lynn, oh, and remember, J.C. the people who are in the Honey Bunch are J.C. Lynn, Summer, Dr. Josh, and Gino the Greek. They were the first four in the house. So at some point uh, yesterday, I, I saw them, I saw a couple of them talking and it seemed like that, that alliance still had a little bit of life, but I think that changed towards the latter end of the day, but we'll see. The nominees this week I mentioned are Jay and JC Lynn, right? Marty's the HOH. They're working the house and that they are trying to secure votes. I like seeing that because both of them are playing the game. Um, they're not just rolling over. So that's the expectation we as viewers would like to see and they are really doing it they all are counting votes or they both are counting votes they both are campaigning they both are reaching out to people and trying to secure votes we like that all right stephanie jc lynn and helena are chatting and it sounds like they're trying to figure out the guys and the alliances they're they're in um they also talked about jess and wanting her out i found that interesting well it's not really interesting we all know that jess isn't very well liked but she is integrating a little more, so I see her having life a few more weeks, um, but she'll have to win something soon to sustain, you know, her time or to keep her time in the house uh, a little longer. Um, the interesting he- thing here is Helena. Um, I think I said yesterday in yesterday's episode or my last live feeds update episode, I think she's underestimated in the game compared to others. But she's in the mix all day. Yesterday, she was talking, um, not a lot, but she was strategizing and planning and connecting with people and talking and and uh, hyping people up. And yeah, so she's definitely playing. It was nice to see. Um, and then at the same time, when they were all in the kitchen, she was swinging a bag and knocked over someone's glass. <laughs> Isn't that just so Helena? I mean, she's talking one, she's strategizing, she's looks looking good as a player, and then the next thing the thing you know, she's knocking over something on the table. Um, I think it's worth repeating that this cast is not disappointing. They're all actively engaged and they're playing, and it's great for us fans, right? All right. I've also been meaning to mention the fascination with Gino. Um, As we saw on premiere night, uh, they were going around introducing themselves and he just says, hey, my name's Gino and I'm 28. (laughs) And that was enough to make the ladies go crazy. And ladies meaning uh, JC Lynn and Stephanie. I found that to be so funny because he just, everybody else was like, I'm this age, I work in this field and whatever the, you know, and Gino was like, hey, I'm Gino and I'm 28. (laughs) 
And that was it. Oh, it was so funny. Uh, he's a nice looking guy. He's very attractive. I think Stephanie tried um, to get closer with him the night before. And it looks like JC Lynn likes him too. But <clears throat> if, from what I can tell, I don't think he's like interested. <laughs> I don't. Um, there are memes online. I'm telling you, BB Twitter, there, there's, there are, um, they can be vicious. There are memes out there where we see, uh, Stephanie and Gino talking at the table and they were reading, you know, things on a carton or something like that. And then and translating into a different language. And the caption said, somebody please come <laughs> Someone please come um, save Gino. And the the way that they had his face, it was like, why am I here? <laughs> anyway, I found that a little bit funny. But I guess I'm trying to say that I think uh, both Stephanie and JC Lynn are maybe interested in Gino, but I don't think he's interested. He's interested in playing the game. So, And I think he said he was going to use that as part of his strategy, right? He'll flirt and do what he needs to do. Um, all right, Kyle confirmed the seven as in the savage seven today in the pantry when he was talking with Dr. Josh and Gino and they were talking game in terms of what is the play for the veto, right? He, Gino and Dr. Josh all agreed to leave the nominations the same. So at this point, this was before the power of veto was played and they were trying to just agree, what are we going to do if one of them were to get picked and play in the veto? And they agreed that Nam should stay the same. <clears throat> and again, uh, at this point, JC Lynn and Jay are on the block. Okay, Kyle, Gino, Moose, Marty, and Herman. Um, oh, I made a note here. Okay, so, all right, here's the fireworks so starting. Okay, so Jay... Um, in my mind, when he did this, I don't believe we saw this on the feeds, but they referenced it a lot in the live feeds yesterday. Um, and my first thought was, Jay, what are you doing? Um, all right. So apparently Jay went up to Kyle and said, I know that you're an alliance. And if he stays or excuse me, I know that you're an alliance. And if they stay, they're going to break that up. So this is what Jay is telling uh, Kyle in the pantry or the storage room. He went. Uh, Jay went up to Kyle and said, I know you're in the alliance. I know. And, and he started naming the people, or excuse me, they started naming the people in the alliance. Jay said, I know you are with Kyle, or excuse me, saying this to Kyle. I know you with Gino, Moose, Marty, and Herman. And I'm going to, if I stay... I win the veto, and if I stay this week, I'm coming after you. That's what Jay was telling Kyle. That, that's allegedly what was said. So at this point, I'm not 100% sure Jay's approach works in his favor, right? Or works in their favor, I should say. And that's only because this is before the veto is being played. You you can't go around threatening people before you have... you. Until you have a little bit of power, right? It would have been nice after the POV, um, you know, that is if Jay won the power of veto and then you go up to someone saying, I'm staying and guess what? I'm coming after you. That would be something different. But no, Jay did this all before. Um, outright going up to huge threats in the house and telling them, I'm coming after you. That's kind of bold. <laughs> uh, but I think Jay feels their game is slipping away. And I will say, um, and, and, and they will say and do almost anything just in the hopes to cause a reaction and potentially shift the target. We've seen this a lot too. So you go, you try to blow up stuff and you try to make so much of um, a ruckus or, you know, a distraction that people will start to think about another person, <laughs> right? In terms of switching the target. Um, it wasn't successful yesterday though. Oh, well, it didn't look like it was successful. And I'll talk about that in a minute. All right. Kyle made a reference to how he doesn't like Jay's attention seeking tactics. And he feels, Kyle feels it's not the spirit of the game, but Helena kind of checked Kyle and said for him to hold his cards a little closer to his chest. And my take on that little uh, conversation 
was that Kyle has pretty much had it or had it with uh, Jay. <laughs> Uh, and it began to show and Helena told him to be careful because it could come across negatively. Um, so good for Helena and good for Kyle for self-correction, I guess. Right. Because as we learned yesterday on those feeds, uh, <laughs> uh I mean, it worked in that moment, but, uh, Kyle kind of blew up as well. So, but we'll talk about that. Um, and I keep saying, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I did want to mention after that, uh, yesterday I did mention that I do feel Jay is performing a little bit. I mean, he had safety the first week. He wasn't humble. Oh, excuse me. They had safety the first week. They weren't humble at all. They didn't attempt to like build um, relationships in that first week because they were safe. I think this was a critical moment in Jay's game and he kind of um, failed, right? or they kind of failed because they were interested in um, just being relaxed around the house and playing and quote unquote, getting to know people, but weren't really building strategy because they were safe that first week. And that is a mistake, right? Yeah. You have safety the first week, but it's important how you play in these first few weeks, right? We see this, we see alliances forming. And as I name the alliances in my live feed updates, um, that I did number two um, and where I named all the alliances, I have that in the title. Jay wasn't in them, right? <laughs> yeah. I, he, Jay has a few people he uh, they talk to, but Jay is not solidified in a quote unquote alliance. And that is problematic for Jay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Helena has been playing and planning all day. And remember my last episode, I said she was notably not in an alliance, not in an alliance. Um, And I felt that she was underestimated. I think that's changing for her. I'll just say that. Uh, Jess is still being awkward. Her mom is asking Jess about her art, uh, Jess about her art or their art. And I, um, and if she, uh, if, uh, (laughs) let me start again. Jess is still being awkward. Herman is asking, and what I mean by that is in the conversation that Herman and Jess were having in the kitchen. Herman is asking Jess about their art and their business um, and whether or not Jess is on social media for their business. Um, Jess began to share information and the conversation was going well. And then Jess went into thanking him for helping them remember that they can share information and talk about themselves. It was just so awkward. And I'm thinking, what, why do you do this, Jess? Why? Just continue the conversation. It was very nice. You know, people are sharing information about themselves, about their business, about their likes. And then you go into this whole, I want to thank you for allowing me to share. I have to remember that I can share about myself. Like what, what? It just was so awkward. And uh, I don't know. I think Jess needs to relax a little bit in her in, in their conversations. Stop trying to educate people in terms of in life, you need to be able to speak up. Like stop doing that type of thing, right? I mean, yes, people are younger in the house uh, than Jess, but they still have experiences. Young people have experiences You don't know what they have experienced in their life. You know, um, a young 23 year old could be as mature as a 40 year old, you know, but, and I hate when I see like older people always trying to say, well, because I have age, I have more wisdom. Like, does that mean you have more experiences than that person? Like, I, I, I don't know. We all are learning as we get older. I just don't like when just continues to try to like share like, oh, in life, you should be able to do this. And thank you for helping me. Like, stop that. Just lean into the conversation. Just go with it. Relax a little bit. It's just so weird. I don't know. All right. Oh, one thing I, when I was watching just today, I figured out who just reminds me of. <laughs> and, or I should say who just resembles in my opinion, and that's Mayim Bialik, right? Mayim Bialik was Blossom, and now she's in this uh, show. 
Uh, she's blo- she was Blossom growing up as a kid, and she's also a host on Jeopardy, and she's also um, in a sitcom called Call Me Cat, which I love that show. It's so funny to me. Um, anyway, Jess turned, like, she she turned her head. She was walking through the door. She turned her head. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, she looks like, and it just came to me. Um, and then I went to BB Twitter, and boy, oh, boy, they are saying thing. I don't want to repeat what they say on Twitter um, about Jess. Um, but, yeah, she resembles Mayim Bialik. What do you think? You have to let me know. Then I heard one of the conversations and I realized that I'm getting old because just listening to JC Lynn Dredd turning a quarter of a century, <laughs> I think her birthday is in August or October or something like that. Uh, it just gave me pause because she's like, she meaning JC Lynn's like, oh, I'm turning 20, 25 and she was just dreading it. I don't want to be in the quarter century club. <laughs> All right. Um, one thing that has been talked about online and now I think we heard it once in the house by Betty, um, the red door is speculated to be the have not room, but the numbers keep changing on that door. They're going down. They're counting down. Um, I don't know what the increment of time is in terms of the numbers, but, uh, look out for that. Next time you watch the, the, the show, um, once it airs, look out, look at the red door It's behind the couch in the common area or the living room. And the numbers continue to change. They're going down. So I don't know what happens when it hits zero. But Betty recognized that yesterday and asked if anyone else uh, noticed. So, yeah, we have to see what that's about. Um, There is another alliance. Well, I talked about this alliance yesterday, but I know the name for it now. It's called Man's Down. (laughs) And it's an alliance between Betty, Summer, Helena, and Tanisha. Uh, I don't know if that's a solid alliance because Helena was going around the house just outing the alliance, um, <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe it's an alliance, but I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and I think this uh, stemmed off of the guys having an alliance and they were talking, trying to figure out who the guys are aligned with, like who's aligned with whom, and they know there's a guy's alliance, and so they wanted to make an alliance. So it's called Man Down, it's all women, and that's Betty, Summer, Helena, and Tanisha. Wow. All right. Summer and Marty has an alliance and they're called Smarty. <laughs> Isn't that clever? I would have never guessed that these two would align, but stranger, th- stranger things have happened in the game. I think it's a good alliance if they can keep it up because no one would ever suspect, right? Marty is like the oldest guest in the house and Summer is one of the youngest guests in the house. Uh, she's 25. She's not the youngest. I think Kyle is the youngest, if I'm not mistaken. But Anyway, the, you wouldn't think that they have a lot in common, but to, in the game, I think they talk very well in terms of game um, and there's a respect there. And so, yeah, there's an alliance called Smarty and that's Summer and Marty. <laughs> I thought that was a very clever name. All right, let's get into the spoiler alert. The power of veto. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. All right, as I mentioned earlier, Marty is the HOH, nominated Jay and JC Lynn for eviction. The players in the Power of V were chosen. And remember, they have that wheel, um, that wheel of fortune, I was going to say, but that wheel that they spend to pick the Power of Veto players. Um, And check out my live feeds episode, the one that has Wendy's in the title, because I have a video showing how they pick the Power of uh, the players for the Power of Veto. Um, during Herman's HOH. So check out that video. Anyway, the players selected or the players playing in the Power of Veto are the two nominees. Um, so that's JC and Jay. And then uh, Betty, Helena, and Dr. Josh were selected on the wheel. And then some are hosted. So, yep. And the Power of Veto winner, the Power of Veto winner was Jay. C. Lynn. Ah, you like that, right? <laughs> so J.C. Lynn won the power of veto. All right. The fireworks that happened yesterday were in the HOH room. I guess Kyle was going to take a dump in the HOH room. Jay saw him going into the, into the room and asked if he can talk to them or asked if they can talk with Kyle. So Jay and Kyle in the HOH room on the couch. Um, And Jay asked if Kyle had any idea. I think it started with Jay asking Kyle if he had any idea who would be the renoms, you know, because of course, JC Lynn's going to take herself down. So, um, 
And it sounded at first like Jay was walking back, them calling out the five people to Kyle, right? Remember, he said, I'm going, or she, they said, I'm going after you and naming all these other people. Um, and so Kyle is trying to, um, <clears throat> basically, Jay is confronting Kyle on being in this big guys alliance. And Kyle is trying to BS his way out of it, saying he's not in an alliance um, and he's a little arrogant. And that's what I found to be. I mean, I don't know what would we what would we expect if Jay is calling out Kyle saying you're in an alliance? What is Kyle supposed to do? Say, yes, I am. You know, he still wants to play the game. He still wants to, like, protect his own his own game. So why would he offer up any of that information? Right. Um, but I think Jay specifically targeted Kyle um, for this conversation because Jay knew that he can get under Kyle's skin, like rattle him. Um, and it was Jay's attempt to blow up something in the house and try to bring down Kyle, I think, uh, at the same time, causing a distraction and potentially shifting the target from Jay themselves to someone else, right? I don't think it was successful. I just looked at this and thought, what are you doing, Jay? Anyway, there was a confrontation. They had a confrontation because they were going back and forth in terms of Jay, you know, confronting Kyle on being in this alliance. And Kyle is trying to be a wordsmith saying, well, no, I'm not. And why should I protect you? And they were going back and forth. Jay successfully rattled Kyle because then he went on this tour around the house explaining to Kevin and then explaining to the other guys in the house and it's, or before the other guys in the house, he went to Kevin first. Then he went to one of the rooms that they sleep in the question mark rooms. Um, he was explaining it there to who was in that room. And then Jay came into the room and while Kyle is telling the story, Jay has uh, started to say things like Kyle is making monkey noises at him and called him fabulous, implying like he was insulting him. I, I don't know. It was kind of weird. I didn't see any of that in the conversation that Jay and Kyle had in the HOH. So I don't know if Jay was referring to something earlier. Maybe we didn't see on the live feeds, but I didn't see anything that Jay is accusing Kyle of doing. Uh, in that conversation. The only thing that I suspect that could be interpreted as what Jay was saying, talking about the monkey noises, is when Kyle was talking about, yeah, you are going around the house and you're going to get the big, strong guys and boom, boom, boom. Like he, you know, but to me, when he was saying boom, 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 I think it was like, you know, somebody's beating their chest, like being tough, like this caveman kind of thing. I don't know. I just know that uh, Jay kind of threw out allegations. Shortly after that, the feed shut down. I tried to wait <laughs> like 10 to 15 minutes. I was getting tired. This was very late or early, early, early this morning, like one o'clock in the morning or something like that, Eastern time. And I couldn't hold on. I'm like, oh, we'll pick up in the morning to see, you know what happened after the fact, but they cut that. And maybe they'll air some of this um, in an episode coming up for the power of veto. I don't know. But Jay and Kyle had a confrontation. Basically, Jay is calling out Kyle in terms of trying to put him on front street in terms of being in this big male alliance. Kyle is trying to cover it up saying, I don't have any power in the house. I didn't. And then Kyle, the arrogance came in when he was talking with Jay saying, why would I protect you after you said this? And then more arrogance when he was talking saying, yeah, you should have won the veto. You needed it and you, you should have. And I'm going to make sure you're out of the house now. And see, this is what I'm saying, how Jay rattled Kyle. Kyle, your game was nice and, and, and it, it was, he was in a sweet spot, right? Because he wasn't on anyone's radar. But after this fight, don't you think Kyle is going to be on everyone's radar? Maybe not like as a target, but now people are paying attention to Kyle. That's what I'm trying to say. Before this fight, no one was really paying attention to Kyle. They were enjoying his stories in terms of a game player, right? But now after all this, now people are looking at Kyle, right? 
it could turn on him later, but I guarantee people now know who Kyle is and they're looking at him. And so if that was Jay's attempt at strategy, that part worked. I don't know if it worked enough for him to, or for them to remain in the house, but we shall see, right? Anyway, they were cutting the feeds and, you know, they get to a good place and it's like, now we'll see more conversation. And then they finally just shut the feeds down and it was all over. So I'll continue to watch to see if I learn more um, after the situation between, between Jay and Kyle and we'll see. All right. So that's all I have. So be sure to come back and give me a listen. I'd love for you to sh- like, share and follow and subscribe. And you can also leave me a comment, leave me a message. If you're listening to the podcast, there's a link to leave me a message right on that landing area. So you have to check that out. All right. So my name is Danielle and you're listening to my podcast chatter out loud. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, I appreciate your support and that's all I have. Thanks again for listening. And I'll talk to you next time.